Hey, what's up guys, Mitch HD here, and I'm here with the TAM Airlines 777-300ER in a 1-200 scale by in-flight. Make sure you check the description for anything you may have missed throughout this video, and my Facebook and Twitter will be down there, as well as the website I pre-ordered this from, which was wafflecollectibles.com. So this is my 18th 777 model, and it's my second TAM Airlines model, because I have the 767-300. Uh, some information about TAM. Operations base is, is out of Sao Paulo. Um, main hubs are Sao Paulo, Garulhos International Airport, Rio de Janeiro, Galeo International, and Brasilia International. And sorry if I get some of these wrong. Uh, focus cities are Congonas, Sao Paulo Airport, Santos Dumont, Silvio Petrosi International, Deputado Luis Eduardo Magal Hayes International, Eduardo Gomez International, Tancredo Neves International, Salgado Filho International, Hercilio Luz International, Pinto Martins International, Recife Guara Rapez Gilberto Freire International, Afonso Pena International, Greater Natal International, Valdez Valdez International, and Miami International. That was probably the easiest one to pronounce. They were founded on the 21st of February 1961 as TAM, which is Taxi Aereo Marilia. Their fleet consists of 165 aircraft as of the 3rd of July 2015, and 10 of these are 777-300ERs. They have 87 destinations worldwide, and their 777 routes are from Sao Paulo Grilhos to Frankfurt, Charles de Gaulle, Heathrow, JFK, and Miami. This aircraft's first flight was on the 9th of June 2008 and was delivered to TAM on the 14th of August 2008. The Boeing customer code for TAM is 2W. So I'll show you around the box here. And as you can see there's a picture of the aircraft and all the cities or all the airports they fly to. A bit like that. So they've got all that there, all 87 cities. Triple seven pictures of, the, of um, you know their service and their their cabin and all that other kind of stuff. License down at the bottom there. One world logo, but there's something something you need to see um, about their alliance that's on this aircraft. In flight two hundred, and then some warnings at the bottom here. The top of the box. Just some information about TAM, which I didn't see before I researched uh, the information I just read out. If you want, you can pause any of this um, and read it. And as you can see, the airline withdrew from Star Alliance and joined One World effective March 31, 2014. That's what I was getting on about. Uh, this aircraft still has the Star Alliance logo, just like my 767 that I, I've got. Um, Starlines logo, not the One World logo. So they obviously started designing this aircraft uh, early 2014 or late 2013. And then let's take a look inside now. We see the aircraft, the stand, and let's see what number I got. Number 144, the same as the Garuda Indonesia. Alright guys, so the model is now out of the box and we'll take a look starting from the cockpit windows on the port side. So we see the cockpit windows, part of the registration above the cockpit windows, UA, the magic red carpet, that's like their slogan, pedo tube static ports, uh, Brazil flag, but however, they are not a flag carrier of Brazil. Um, they just, they're just kind of like the national airline. Then you see the Star Alliance logo, because as I said before, they were in Star Alliance before they joined, um, before, before TAM and LAN Airlines um, merged together to form the Latum Group. So, yeah, they were part of Star Alliance, but now they're part of One World, which is a group of 15 airlines. Part of the registration on the gear door, the TAM titles. I think these look very good. Also got the um like the bird like a seagull. 
and there's the landing light on the inboard part of the wing just there the G90-115B engine with Brazil written on it and I'll show you inside the engine you see, also see the engine strake right here very detailed engines, they spin very easily there you go alright so let's continue along the leading edge of the wing to the red navigation light right there the strobe light as well and then we'll continue along the fuselage towards the APU you see Boeing 777-300ER right there in the grey letters and the registration PTMUA or Papa Tango Mike Uniform Alpha and then the TAM logo on the tail alright so let's take a look at the APU very very well detailed APU although the strobe lights stick out too far but very detailed and now we'll go to the starboard side so we see cockpit windows Star Alliance logo, magic red carpet Brazilian flag, part of the registration on the gear door cargo container door TAM titles and the G90 engine Come across the leading edge of the wing again on the side and we see the green navigation light and then back to the fuselage we see rear cargo container door and the bulk bin door and the registration and then the TAM logo alright so now Let's take a look underneath the aircraft. You see the first gear. There's a beacon light. There's the main gears and the gear doors. There's an antenna and the hole for the stand. Under the wing flaps, slats, aileron. Let's see if it will focus properly. You see PT, and then the registration will continue on this side. MUA. It doesn't want to focus on the thinner parts of the wing, but we'll continue down. You see uh, two painted on antennas, I'm pretty sure, and then antenna right there. There's a little uh, hump there, so there's a tail strike, and then the housing for the APU. And on top, we have an emergency escape hatch, anti collision light. Another emergency escape hatch and antenna. Emergency escape hatch again. Two uh, ADF antennas. There's um, overwing emergency exits. Flaps, slats, ailerons, and spoilers on this side. Rake wingtip, and you see the no step markings on there. Same on this side. And continuing down we see the SATCOM antenna, this little hump, escape hatch, two more antennas, and down to the tail where there's a comms antenna in here. Two um, grey dots on each horizontal stabilizer. Those are the local lights that light, light up the tail at night time. Alright, so oops, a gear sort of when you roll it forward, just be careful, it might come off. Uh, because they don't sit in as deep as the Gemini Jets ones or JC Wings ones but I feel they're a lot better alright so there are two two configurations for the 777's so their first configuration so it's first class with four flatbed seats in rows one just obviously the first window or two windows then there is business class 56 angle flat seats from rows 5 to 12 so that is from here here all the way to here and then there is economy from rows no sorry 302 seats from rows 15 to 17 
and 19 to 46. So that's here all the way to the back of the aircraft, and that sorry, um, that brings a total to 362 seats. Then their second version is first class, four flat bed seats again, rows one, row one, just that row. Uh, business 45 angle flat seats from rows five to 11. So there to the same place again. And then 314 economy seats from rows 14 to 47. So there to the back of the aircraft and that brings a total to 363 seats. All right, so I'll show you some features of this aircraft now. So they roll very nicely. Just be careful of that front gear. As I said, if you, if you watch the front gear uh, for a second, you can see what I mean. It sort of likes to slide back. So it's not sitting quite square like that as it should. But it's still, still, um, I think they're slightly better than Gemini Jets and JC Wings at this current time. Main gears tilt. Front gear swivels. As you can see. And now I'll put it on the stand. So, here is the stand. All metal stand, but it's got a wood look to it, which is nice. However, if you've got a glass table, I would not... If you've got a cabinet with glass um, benches on them, I would not recommend using the stand if you're going to be moving it around a bit. Um, I would not recommend it anyway, because you might just scratch the glass. But it is a good stand, very sturdy. Uh, just watch out, it might, might not sit on the top right. But this came in two pieces, so I had to screw the um, part that goes into the plane on. But yeah, it's a very nice stand, I have to say. Uh, very executive looking. Put that in there. And it's not looking the best, but it's sitting there. Kind of... Kind of, um... Flat, actually. It's just flat. As you can see here. Never seen that before. I kind of would like it if it was going up a bit. But it looks like it's coming into land. So if I was to put the gears like this, it would look like it's coming into land right there. The gears, they're magnetic, they come off very easily, just like Gemini Jets or JC Wings. These ones, they stay on actually a bit better because they've got these little um, holes. Uh, they're not magnetic holes, but they're just extra holes there that hold the gears on um, a lot better so they won't fall off while you're rolling the gears, which is a, a good um, thought. And JC Wings or Gemini Jets need to probably do the same thing. Here are the gear replacements, so if you want to put it in in-flight mode. You got the gear doors there, and I didn't show these in my last video, the Garuda 777, but as I was saying, they are flat, they are smaller, um, more compact than the Gemini and JC Wings ones. But anyway, guys, this will be the end of the video now. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, make sure you check out my next video, which is a special unboxing. I'm not going to mention it, I'm not going to mention what it is yet, but tune in. And uh, it's one you don't want to miss. One of my favorite models of all time. Uh, also, check my previous video, the Garuda 777-300ER. I will be doing a comparison between Phoenix in-flight and J-Swings and Gemini 777s, 300ERs. And yeah, also, like the video. Uh, to tell me that you did enjoy it. Comment, tell me what you think. Tell me if you're going to get it. Uh, share so other people can um, decide if they want to get it and subscribe for more. I have a lot more unboxings, um, new arrivals pretty soon uh, and other videos you do not want to miss. So anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.